Now, um, I am so excited to introduce our keynote speaker, Bree McNaught. Bree is a Florida native, a graduate from the Nicholson School of Communication and Media at UCF, and before that, Nice High School in Jacksonville. Just 10 years ago, she was in your school, your shoes competing at conventions like STN. Now, Bree is a sports reporter for Spectrum News 13 in Orlando, a job she started just two months before the COVID-19 pandemic. It shut everything down. Bree is the perfect personification of our theme, outside the box, as she had to get creative covering sports when there really wasn't any sports happening. So without further ado, your 2021 FSPA Spring Convention keynote speaker, Bree McNaught. Hi guys, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, you know, the work from home life is full of technical difficulties, but we are gonna get through it because that is the uh, motto for this year to say the least. So Adam, let me see if I can share my screen now, right? All right, can you all see my screen now, Adam? Not, not yet, Adam, maybe Adam has to give up presenting rights. There we go, okay, you should be able to. How about now? Are we good, Adam? Nope. Nope, okay. Let's see here, share screen, share two. Okay. Yes. All right. How about now? Yes. Awesome. All right. We are in this together. Uh, like Adam said, my name is Bree McNaught. I am a sports reporter uh, right now in Orlando, Florida. Super excited. Uh, this is my hometown. So kind of a quick little bio. I am a sports multimedia journalist. That's the title they give us nowadays. That means basically we can do it all. We shoot, we write, we edit, we anchor. We do it all. Um, I'm following my passion every day. Uh, the dream started in high school. Like Adam said, I was in your shoes, you know, just 11 years ago. I blossomed in college, go Knights, charge on. And then it took off in the real world. I've been in this career since 2015 and was able to reach my ultimate dream by being a sports reporter in my hometown by 2020. And then of course the pandemic hit. So we're gonna get into all that, but that's, I just wanna kind of take you guys through the journey of what I do and where I've been because I know when I was in your shoes, it helped to see that the dream was attainable and that you could be that person in just a few years. So with that being said, it all started actually way back in fifth grade, um, kind of more of a joke picture. I am the girl in the blue that has a good old USA on my shirt that is love at first sight. Um, we had a, a public or a sun news is what we called it over in Melbourne, Florida, if any of you are familiar with that area. Um, I went to Century Elementary School, and that was my first exposure, if you will say, to the journalism world. Uh, we, I'm kind of dating myself, but I believe we were back on uh, tape to tape back then. There was no digital fancy stuff. So that's when I got my first kind of taste of it. And then fast forward to high school. That was my mentor. My teacher still is. Her name is Miss Combs. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Jacksonville area, but she was incredible. And um, she helped me kind of find my passion for journalism. So we went to STN, which I believe is the same type of uh, thing in high school. So just 11 years ago, I was soaking it all in at STN. That one was actually in California. So that was super cool because that was my first time going to California. You know, like I said, soaking it in, thanks to my wonderful mentor, um, Jamie Combs. And then after that, STN 2011, that was my senior year with two of my mentors also, um, Jamie there. And we actually won. I was the executive director for our school's newscast. We won the excellence award. And that's when I truly realized, okay, this, this is for me. Um, ironically, before that, I wanted to do something in athletic training. And then that STN convention really just showed me that I have a true passion and drive for this. So why not go for it? So that was that STN really ignited things. You see my teammates, my classmates behind me, um, one of the best conventions. Uh, and I know FSPA is also super fun. One of my best friends went to it, um, you know, so we would always talk about it. So they're great to soak it all in. And then from there, I went to UCF. Um, that's my senior year. I wish you guys could hear that picture because 
it is just crazy to look back that I guess six years ago now, um, how different I am as a reporter. Um, but that was a girl with a dream in that picture with their UCF sports. Um, and I guess to kind of take it back a little bit, this internship right here on the other side of the screen, um, that was one of several internships I was able to do at college. And that's why I really loved going to school at UCF because you have, you know, several different uh, news stations within the area that are pretty good at, you know, doing internships. And so that was one of several. My first internship, I was actually in a news internship at uh, Channel 6, WKMG. And I was tax tasked with doing the George Zimmerman trial. So I was constantly uh, logging. I had to log it. I had to um, see what, you know, was not suitable for TV and kind of mark it and time code it. And that's when I realized, you know what? I love sports. I love storytelling. I'm going to go into sports. I'm going to follow my passion. Um, at the time, that's when females in sports was kind of still becoming more and more popular. Um, so it was scary, but I went for it. I went for it and I succeeded. And um, it was really nice because of those internships, I was able to figure that out. Um, that I rather do sports. So I highly, 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 highly recommend. I didn't get paid for any of those internships. I was doing those along with taking four classes and I had three jobs in college. So you're going to be busy. You might not have that college life, but those internships let me find out my true passion. And so I highly, highly, highly recommend internships or just shadowing somebody or just getting to know the, the the ropes because yes in college and high school you learn a lot but once you're in it it is a whole nother ball field so with that being said from there I went to Panama City Florida so right out of college I am 21 years old I moved to Panama City I'm making twenty five thousand dollars and uh it is market 149 so with that the way markets work a lot of you should know um it is a very small market very small town. I'm straight out of college. I don't know anybody, not a soul. I move out there and you have to become a part of this community in order to have them trust you and tell your story, tell their stories. Um, very scary. Also, when you're out of college, a lot of your friends are still kind of in the area, haven't quite moved and you leave all of them for your passion and for your dream. Um, so it's, it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. I want to um, make that known, but it was worth it because after that, I was there for two years. I landed a job in Mobile, Alabama, where I got to cover um, Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide, Gus Malzahn, Auburn, um, you know, games at LSU, South Alabama, and uh, two national championships, uh, a couple, obviously, um, senior bowls, all sorts of different things. So that's what I got to do there. Um, I was there, that's market 57. So that's a pretty good jump, almost a hundred markets. Um, and I was very proud of myself. I was a one woman sports department in Mobile, Alabama. Um, I was the entire department. I worked all of the sports, I did it all. Um, so lots of more knowledge, lots of experience um, there. From there, two and a half years later, I landed my dream job here at Spectrum News 13. Um, this is market 18. I'm on the floor of UCF's basketball arena. That's where I you know, went to college. That's me interviewing the head coach just a month ago. Um, so I still have to pinch myself some days because I'm getting to cover my hometown and my alma mater and I'm only 27 years old. I mean, I, I was just in your shoes. It feels like yesterday. So the dream you know, all came together because of hard work, because I put in the time and the effort and, and all of this good stuff in order to fulfill my dream. And so some days it's, you know, sitting back and reflecting on that and being, you know, giving yourself a tap on the back and being like, Hey, I did it. I, I got there. So with that being said, in this industry, especially this year, you are always thinking outside of the box. Like Adam said, in my introduction, I start this job in January, super excited. I'm home. Pandemic cancels sports completely. I have a 30 minute sports show every single night. What do you do? You, the show must go on. You, you're not, okay, we're not doing it. You have sponsors. You're not done. The show still happens. What do you do? 
Well, you have to think outside the box. I mean, it's a, so ironic that that's your theme this year because that is literally what you have to do. We're going to get to that a little more, but um, two things that I really want you to take out of this session with me. The number one being that um, the soles of your shoes tell your story. If any of you have a chance to go into Rick Brunson's sessions at all this week, um, he was one of my professors at UCF and he introduced me to that saying, and I live by that saying, the soles of your shoes tell your story. We're going to get to that here in a second. So um, yeah, you have to think outside the box in order to fill a 30 minute show with no sports happening. Um, and then also the industry is ever changing. So you have to stay on top of your game. I remember when I first got into the industry, it was, um, you know, I was just getting to as many schools as I could, getting the highlights, putting the highlights on TV, making sure I miss, uh, hit my slot. And it was Snapchat. I remember having meetings with bosses of what kind of geo filters can we use to really get these high school kids um, enticed and want to watch our Friday night football show. Now it's TikTok, uh, you know, and now it's more of storytelling rather than gathering all those highlights. So we'll get to those two things, but let's go back to the soles of your shoes. Tell the story. So with that being said, it's take it quite literal. I have a pair of shoes that I wish I brought down with me. They're upstairs in my room, but the soles of them are worn out. The stories that those shoes have seen are pretty incredible. That means, and it's hard to think about because right now we're all kind of, we were stuck at home and virtual, but you have to get out and about. You have to go. And when you're out, be curious. So for instance, if you're at a, Haggerty football game or you're at a practice or you're somewhere be looking up be curious for instance I was once covering a high school football team out in Mobile and I was covering I was going to their practice to get video of the coach and kind of preview the upcoming game I hear a band you know practicing in the field right next to the football team and it's um pretty loud and I look over and there's really only like 12 maybe 20 of them total and I was like, wow, that is a small band. Then I look at the band instructor and he only has one arm and he's sitting there doing that. And so I go to the coach and I'm like, coach, hey, what, what's, what's, who, what, you know, what's his name? What's the deal over there? He's like, yeah, he's great. He was a part of the Alabama million dollar band. And next thing you know, I have this incredible story right in front of my eyes. And it's all because I, I looked up and I was there. My soles of my shoes, my shoes were there. I was present in the moment. So you have to be curious. You have to get out there. And another thing is you can't be afraid of rejection. I couldn't tell you the amount of times I have seen this awesome story. And I asked the people, hey, can I share your story? And they're like, no, we don't want to talk to you. Who are you? You're a complete stranger. That's okay. I don't blame them. I wouldn't maybe want to tell everyone my story either. Um, but your ability to share stories the correct way can truly change lives if they're done right. You can really inspire people. And to me, that is the most powerful part of being a journalist is um, we're going to get to that kind of more in the next slide, but you can truly inspire people. So the soles of your shoes tell your story. I know I've said it a hundred times today and I'm going to say it a hundred more, but I really want you to all embrace that as journalists. Be curious, go out there. I have another example coming up for you guys. When the pandemic happened, there was nothing. A lot of people in Florida, luckily, were just walking outside. The weather was gorgeous. So I live close to Lake Eola for all of you who um, are from Orlando. And me and my um, friends were walking around Lake Eola one day. And we noticed there was this guy with a handmade sign that said free soccer lessons. And so I noticed the first time I went out there and I was walking by, he had like two kids out there. Then a month later, I walked by and he had about 30 kids out there. So, of course, I stopped him. and I was like, hey. What's, what's going on here? What, what are you doing? Um, you know, obviously friendly. And he was the nicest guy. His name's Andres Luna. You guys are going to watch the story. I don't want to spoil it too much, but he had an incredible story behind him. And that was also when, you know, the community was really broken. You know, everything was going on with the rallies and, and, you know, a lot of different things happening. And this one guy was bringing a bunch of different people together. And to me, that just ignited my flame. I'm like, okay, sports are canceled, but there are people like Andres Luna out there that are doing things that I can go find. I went and did a story with a surfer um, out in Melbourne, Florida, who's also an artist who works with Kelly Slater quite often. Um, you know, he's just a surfer. The way I found that story is I called my friend who's a surfer. It's my best friend's husband. I was like, hey, do you have any friends who have cool stories? He's like, I sure do. 
So, you know, just having that curious mindset constantly um, makes you think outside the box. Yes, sports are normally football, basketball, baseball, softball, lacrosse, your normal sports, but sometimes you'd be surprised um, that, you know, other, other people have just as strong as passions in, in other um, facets and, and, and stuff like that. So you always have to be curious. Um, so that's that one. Let's go to this, um, the, the next one with your ability to share stories can truly change life. So this industry is obviously ever changing. It is. And you have to be adaptable. That is another huge thing that you constantly have to be on your toes. Things are changing. Like I said, I used to start this industry by just highlights, highlights, highlights. Now I'm storytelling. And that is so powerful because people are trusting me to tell their story. And a lot of times it's a very personal story. Um, so when you do that, you have to take a lot of ownership in it. You have to understand that you are, are responsible for this person telling their story right. And so when you do that and you get it done right and, and it, they love it and it inspires other people, that as journalist is a very, very, very powerful thing. Um, another example that if I have time, I might show you guys uh, this kid, he, he's autistic and he was able to make his JV soccer team. And, you know, I did the story. It was a great story. And then afterwards, I get a text from the mom saying, hey, he gained enough confidence this year. He also went out for the volleyball team and he made it. And so things like that, um, as journalists, we have the power to really you know, inspire people through other people's stories. And so that is um, something you have to take pride in and something that you have to make sure you want to do right. And it can be tiring. You know, you don't necessarily get paid a lot. You, you get, um, you know, there's days where you don't hit a home run and it's, it's not easy, but if you can be adaptable and you can be present, you can be pretty successful in this industry. So with that being said, I want to show you guys, um, I know we have a couple more minutes or here. So I'm going to show you guys a couple different um, examples of the stories. Let's start with that one at Lake Eola because that one really was one of my um, one of my favorites still to this day. So, excuse me for having to do this via Facebook. Lake Eola. Okay, ready. Let's try to make it. Lake Eola, the heart of downtown Orlando. It's a place where people come to relax, and many webbed feet friends call home. It's also where Andres Luna has started something special. How are you? Good? What's your name? I think he is representing what we should have been representing a long time ago, Unity. It doesn't matter what color you are, doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter if you're rich, doesn't matter if you're poor. Okay. We're coming to play together as a team. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. Switch. I came up with an idea where, you know, to give free soccer lessons to the community, of all ages, all kids, even adults. Yeah, Everyone's welcome. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? Venezuela, hablo español. Muy bien, yo también. By the end of the afternoon, more than a dozen join. Ready? Go! Good. Open your hip, play faster. Ah, what's gonna happen in the game? It's really engaging. Everyone is coming out here to have fun, get better. And their skills, you know, meet new people. For the kids, it's great because they're, they've been isolated for the last couple of months. So for them to come out here and get to know people, get to know their name from all over Orlando, they work, what we're doing, what we need. Luna started this initiative to safely help people be active during coronavirus. He's spreading his love for a sport that has given him so much. Soccer, to me, basically saved my life. Luna was born hearing impaired, Seven. but he didn't let that stop him. Eight. Don't touch your knees on the, on the floor. Eight. He earned a spot on the USA Deaf National Team, all while finding solace in soccer. For me, soccer is always, uh, has always been there for me, and it's a way of life. And uh, it's all over the world. So it's, uh, for me, it's like a breath of life. Sharing his passion while setting an example. Very good. Now you're going to do it and you're going to come. That's my main goal, my main message to spread that love and positivity the way you know, they were brought up with me. In downtown Orlando, Bree McNaught, Spectrum Sports 360. So going back to the soles of your shoes, tell your story, that story 
I literally found by walking around, I was walking my dog with my friend around the lake and free soccer lessons. And I mean, the guy ends up being a part of the, the US deaf national team has this incredible story, this incredible heart, and he shares it with me. And so to me, it was a very powerful one. Um, and that was a really exciting one. Another one here that I'm gonna try to show you here kind of goes to thinking outside the box. So Bay Hill, um, Arnold Palmer Invitational is a big golf tournament around here. And this year we only got two credentials for it. Normally we all get credentials, we can all go. But because of COVID, we only had a couple people that could go. Um, so we try to do a lot of stories beforehand. Well, my best friend's husband is actually a groundskeeper at Bay Hill. And he, I, I always will remember this, the month leading up to the tournament, he works 24 seven, literally is there at three in the morning, doesn't leave till after sundown. And he's there every single day. And I'm like, wow, so much work goes in that maybe people don't realize goes into this golf tournament. So I went, I woke up at five in the morning and went and kind of spent a day in the life of what they do. So here's another one that um, had to make me think outside the box. I couldn't cover the tournament but I was able to think outside the box of another story that maybe people wouldn't think about or that hasn't been done before um, to keep people going. So here's one more. I think that might, I don't, I'll have to ask Adam. The Arnold Palmer and the, the Arnold Palmer Invitational attracts thousands of golf fans every year, all gathering to admire their favorite golfers in action. But little do they know the true beauty of the tournament starts here. This is where we store all our mowing equipment and everything that we use each and every day to take care of the golf course. You definitely have to have a real passion for this job to succeed at it. Chris Flynn and his crew of 40 full-time groundskeepers are hard at work. Right now it's, you know, sun up to sundown, uh, seven days a week. So this is, you know, the mad dash to the finish. Yeah, there's not a day I go fire that we're not mowing grass. Making sure the course is in tip-top shape. We mow greens at around a tenth of an inch. Uh, so very, very low. You know, where if you go to the other extreme, which would be our rough, you know, we're right now for a PGA tournament, you know, uh, depending on where we are. This was just cut yesterday, but our rough mowers are set at three inches. On greens, we do a lot more. On greens, we're grooming, even further cut, and you're top dressing. Trying to smooth it out as much as possible. A job that's truly impressive if you think about the scope of work involved. So think about other sporting events and think about what it takes to make a football field look nice. That's 100 yards long, maybe 50 yards wide. We're talking about 18 holes. We're talking about over 7,000 yards. It's an amazing accomplishment with the team here to make sure everything builds so that it's perfect these four days in March. Even when the tournament is done, their work isn't over. And when you're dealing with a living, breathing uh, thing like plants and trees and, and uh, grass, um, you know, it, it requires constant attention. So whether you're a part of the 25% capacity that gets to go to this year's API or you're watching from home, take in the beauty. And remember, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, we can do interviews like this. We can push out press releases. We can talk about all the great golfers that will play here. But we've got to make sure when they show up, the course is in pristine condition and we can put on a world-class golf together. In Orlando, Brie Knott, Spectrum Sports 360. So yeah, those were two big ones um, that come off the top of my head this year that kind of value the what I am preaching here as to, you know, um, the soles of your shoes tell your story and also just be curious, be adaptable, uh, you know, things it was not great that I couldn't get into the Arnold Palmer. Cause I mean, that's a big deal for us and I couldn't get in, but I was able to think outside the box and I was able to make sure we still told great stories, um, you know, about the tournament. And, you know, sometimes in sports, the same story is told over and over and over and like, it's boring. So you have to be able to think outside the box and be able to tell the story in a different way um, or find a new part of the story. Um, so, yeah, I think, 
those are kind of my big things. Adam, I don't know if you want me to hit on anything else at all or Britt, um, but those are my two big things that I want you guys to take from this. And, and also don't be like, just make sure you remember and be confident. You can do it. I remember sitting in your shoes. I remember sitting in that convention surrounded by hundreds of thousands of other high schoolers that had the same dreams as me. And I was like, oh man, this is nerve wracking. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Here I am six years later, you know, I I'm living in, in my hometown. My best friends are all, you know, within an hour from me, my mom's in Jacksonville and dad's in Daytona. And I get to tell my dad gets to watch me on TV every night. I, I mean, that's not the reason why I do it, but it's, it's pretty cool to realize that hard work can pay off. Um, and it is going to be hard. There are days where you're like, wow, this is tough. For instance, I'm supposed to be off today. And uh, Britt and I were laughing. Um, I'm not off today. I have an interview after this because the guy was only available uh, today. And so there are, there are things that are definitely different than a normal nine to five job that are taxing and tiring. But when you get to tell stories like the ones I've told and get to meet the people that you meet. It's um, pretty inspiring and it's pretty, definitely a lot of pinch me moments. Like, wow, I'm truly doing this. So don't be afraid, go after your dreams, go after your passion, but also hold pride in what you do. Um, realize that you, you do have a powerful um, gift of sharing people's stories. Well, oh, that is awesome. Thank you so much, Bree. Uh, wonderful job today. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on. I think we got time maybe for a question. So I'm going to read you one uh, from our, our uh, from the Zoom. And um, it, it's very validating to see somebody making it in the media industry as a multimedia editor. And I'm so grateful to be able to listen and learn from your experiences. What advice do you have regarding telling stories and maintaining readership in an era of fast media, where there is sometimes superficial coverage that very rarely digs deeper, uh, but is heavily consumed. So what advice would you have regarding, you know, good journalism and telling stories and maintaining readership, um, you know, despite all the fast media? Yeah, so I'm really grateful to work for a, a news station that doesn't necessarily like clickbait. You know, they don't, they don't necessarily like, yeah, being first, whatever, we'd rather be right. Um, so with that being said, they also value stories. Um, if you realize nowadays, people want to realize, okay, say there's an issue going on, they want to be able to put an actual human face to that issue or that dilemma that is going on. Because if you can put an actual human face to it, you realize, oh, this person might be just like me, or I know somebody who has to go through that as well. So if you find a character that is within that story, I think that will resonate a lot more than just being the first to just tell the story. Um, obviously, yes, you have to still be up to date with your Twitter and your social media, but you don't have to be first. Make sure you do it right. And when you do that, you're gonna gain more credibility. And when people, for me, with coaches, if I'm the first to do it and I'm wrong, I'm gonna lose a lot of coaches and they're not gonna wanna talk to me and they don't have to talk to me or the players, the athletes. So, but if I do it right, that coach is going to come back to me and give me more stories. So make sure you realize the, the power you have and also put characters to it. That will go a lot further. That will go more viral when you have, um, you know, somebody to the, the story um, rather than just the story, if that makes sense at all, if I answer that. Uh, that was great. Thank you. And their questions are rolling in. We won't get to all of them, but I'm going to throw you a couple more. And I think you definitely hit this in your presentation. But for high school students, this is from West, West Shore Shane. Um, how do you find uh, an outside the box angle on an old story? How do you make maybe content that is uh, common or commonly done? How do you make it new? Be curious. I said it in the presentation, yeah, be curious. Realize there's always something that hasn't been told. There might be, if you're at a baseball game, the peanut guy, he might have a story, you know, that the person uh, greeting people might be retired and, and this has saved their life because they're out of the house now and they're, they're getting interaction that they wouldn't have got maybe at a retirement home or something. You just be so surprised. Everyone has a story. So be approachable, be curious and, and be polite. I mean, if somebody doesn't want to tell you their story, they don't want to tell you, you don't need to push it. Um, but nine times out of 10, people have a pretty neat story. And, and if you can think of it um, in a creative way, you can tell that story. 
And so, yeah, just be curious, be approachable, and don't be afraid to, um, you know, look up. When you're at a game, look up. When you're at an event, look up. I mean, I love people watching and that's helped me, but yeah, look up and, and, and just be curious. Um, and I promise you, there's gonna be a different angle of the story that you have never heard of or that has never been told before. Great, all right, here's another one. Um, any tips for dealing with self-doubt? Yeah, so that happens. And I'm not gonna lie, guys, I have self-doubt. Um, I, I do it quite often. It's just, I think it's human nature to have self, self-doubt. So realize you're not alone. You're not alone at all. You are gonna have people. Uh, you guys, if you, if any of you know me, I've gotten some pretty harsh emails from viewers, um, really harsh, um, telling me that I should lay off the cupcakes, that I should, um, you know, wax my unibrow, the crazy things. But you got to realize that there's people out there that, you know, might not like you. That's just, that's, that's the world. That's the world we live in. And, and um, that's okay, you know, because there's so many people that are inspired by you that do really value what you do. Um, Self-doubt, I, I still have it. And the only person that can control that is yourself. So make sure that you continue to reinforce yourself, um, if that makes any sense. Don't necessarily listen to the outside noise. And I know that's so cliche, but you can't. You can't listen to the outside noise um, and realize that you're not alone. Everyone has self-doubt main anchors who I've been doing this for six years and I host every single Sunday and some Sundays I still am like oh man I wonder if I'm going to do this right you know but be confident um realize you got to where you are because of you so perfect all right I have uh we'll say two more minutes I'm loving these questions uh, so I hate to stop but here's you can keep one going. I have till I have till eight nine fifty so I I got announcements I got to make, Bree. Oh, gotta just have, kidding. I got to have me time. Just kidding. I just mean, kidding. I, I think my mom's watching this this broadcast, <laughs> so she wants, she wants more me time. Um, no, the uh, next one is, uh, what advice do you have for getting interviews with big name athletes? Yeah, so, um, you know, that's kind of tough because right now with COVID, um, you know, you kind of have to, you're, pretty much you have to go through their PR people. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different loopholes, but because of COVID, it's pretty beautiful. Um, there's a lot of virtual interviews. So I don't know if any of you are familiar with Jim Nagy, that is um, the executive director of the senior bowl that's coming up. I'm actually, that's the guy who I'm interviewing next after this, but he's really well tied to the community and well tied to the athletes. So once you get to know people and you start networking and, um, you know, you get to know people who know those people, and they put in a good word for you, you go from there, but also social media too. Most athletes have social media. Um, you know, don't be afraid to slide into their DMs as the kids like to say, make it, make sure you're always professional. Um, and don't be afraid. They're probably nine times out of 10, they're probably not going to reply back. Um, but you know, that just, that's a lot of, um, SIDs who are the college athletes. They're the ones who are going to make sure you, um, get put in touch. So, just do it the right way. And if you do it the right way, uh, nine times out of 10, you'll get to who you want to talk to. But if you do it the wrong way and kind of are um, slimy about it, they'll, they'll cut you off and um, we'll never talk to you again. So yeah. just do it the right way. Burn bridges are hard to uh, unburn. Yeah. So, yeah, don't burn bridges in this industry. Because also this industry, as huge as it is, it's tiny. You'd be so surprised. I mean, when I was in Panama City Market 149, there's a girl now that works around here that I worked with in Panama city. And, you know, she could easily have given me a bad recommendation because I maybe was mean to her in Panama city, but I, you, you can't. So this industry is tiny. You'd be very surprised. So yeah, don't burn your bridges. All right. So let's finish up with one here and last question. And I know, thank you for sending me all these questions out there in zoom land. I wish we could get to them all, but to big finish here, um, how, uh, do you have any tips on how to be approachable? Oh, gosh. Um, let's see here. Sorry, I didn't mean to end you with the tough one. Yeah. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, being approachable. Um, I've always kind of grown up, like my parents will tell you, like when my parents had an adult party, I was that kid sitting there talking to all the adults. Um, 
just being open and being kind. When you're kind, that energy will definitely um, flow off of you and people will realize, oh, you know, this person's nice. And also another big thing is when you do your job the right way, that word will go around. Oh, Brie, you know, she's actually pretty good and she's out there for the best interest of us. Um, so then coaches will come to you and, and give you those stories. So be positive. And I know that sounds um, cliche, but be positive. Your body language says a lot. If you go to a story with your hunched back like this and kind of your head down, you're not approachable. Be open, own that room, be confident, you know, go in there and, and don't be cocky, but be confident and, and realize that you have a powerful gift and, um, you know, and yes, you spend a lot of your time winning people over and getting them to trust you. But once they do trust you, it's pretty powerful. So be confident, um, body language, be positive and be kind. You know, don't just don't be don't be rude. We don't need any more people like that in this world. All right. Again, thank you so much, Bree. A big round of applause out there. Oh. Can hear people. Uh, <laughs> So again, uh, thank you so much for coming to speak to us today. I know your words uh, resonate in you know any year, but especially this year, thinking outside the box and really being positive and being kind. We all certainly need some of that in uh, to to make it through this year. So thanks again for joining us and enjoy your day off. <laughs> of course. Uh, if any of you have any other questions for me, I'm on um, Twitter and um, Instagram at Bree McNaught. Um, literally my name. So feel free to reach out. Um, I would love to help in any way possible. Um, I think that's another big part of this industry is helping the future of this industry as well. I know Lucas is sending you an email from Christopher Columbus High School right now. So I'll be get ready for that one. So. Awesome. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Brie. Thanks guys, have a great day. All right, awesome. That's a great kickoff to session day. So uh, again, a big thanks to Brie uh, today and uh, 